Armored Beacon is here. We're going to talk about what it is, where you use it, who uses it best, and all of those great things. But first off, it is basically slightly worse bonfire. So you've got the 40% damage boost from defense. Bonfire was at 50. And then you've got damage reduction that isn't pierceable. And this is huge. So if ranged foe, and it's only against ranged foe, or foe's special is ready or triggered before or during this combat, DR equals 40%, and that doesn't apply to AoEs. Now, the big thing is why you would want to use this, and this is a special that allows a, a tank to actually do damage back and reduce damage coming in. What do you need to use it? You need slaying, you need special acceleration is key, and you need high bulk. Since this is a three cooldown special, most likely it's going to hit on the second hit. That is key to remember. But summoners, leave in the comments, who are you planning to give this skill to? Like, who would be your ideal unit? If you had infinite orbs and could go in and grab that Hector right now, what unit in your barracks would you like to see it on? Let's look at damage reduction as a whole though, because I've, I've had a lot of questions about this and I got this wrong in my first reaction to this. So I, I needed to go back and study and make sure I didn't do that again. So the first damage reduction we wanna look at is just basically damage reduction from your skill or PRF. This is just basic percent damage reduction. We have Deadeye procced and coming into this Alir and Deadeye is piercing, so all of that damage reduction goes away. That goes to zero. Our next is a defensive special, and now this is key. Defensive specials only proc when the enemy is attacking in. So something like Aegis is not gonna go off when Hector attacks back. It's only going to attack, uh, going to go off when Deadeye comes in. But looking at this, we've got Hardy Fighter, we've got Aegis, and we get a 75% damage reduction that isn't pierceable. So this Deadeye is not doing anything versus this. Then you get a flat damage, which is something completely different, of five based on Hardy Fighter. And we've seen a lot of this being used lately with units like Spring Maria, units like Asker, and units like Dimitri. Uh, it's fantastic, flat damage is amazing, it is not pierceable as well, but we need to get to Armored Beacon because that's what we're really talking about here. Now this is damage, <laughs> this is special based damage reduction. So Deadeye is going to come in and you are going to still get that 40% DR, but I want you to compare those two. So Hardy Fighter Aegis Spectre is getting 75%, then minus five off the top, Armored Beacon is getting 40%. That is a huge difference, and that is why mostly only your newest units are going to be able to use this because they need so much to be able to still survive because that's the world we live in. Nukes are very powerful. We have Veronica, we have Shez, we have tons of things. I lethality is coming at us everywhere lately. <laughs> so let's move on though. I wanna talk about different builds and I wanna talk about Aether Raid's offense first. Aetherade's offense is probably my least favorite spot to use this, but I still think it's very viable there. Uh, we've got three different things here, and of course we have Brave Hector because this unit will never die. Uh, we have Takumi, and this is an interesting thing because this can be inherited to both dragons, uh, beasts, and we've got the ranged armors as well. So I think Takumi is a really interesting user of the skill, and then of course we've got Hector. Hector is amazing. Young Hector is going to absolutely demolish things. Fantastic, right? So let's move on to some of our Sims here. And I'm gonna go through these as quick as I can. I know this is a lot of numbers and if you need to, you can pause through here. But first up, we have Takumi and you can see the results here. And the, the only thing that you're really worried about is that Krom. Uh, Krom is basically the bane of any armored beacon user's existence. Uh, and that is why Brave Hector is still so good with this because the ignoring damage, uh, ignoring armor effectiveness is just fantastic. But you can see everyone else he does very well against. You would like a little more speed versus Shez, but you can't have everything you want, right? Uh, anyway, but you can see how this works out exactly. Uh, we're gonna go over some real life cases because a lot of times these these sims don't fully capture what's going on. But this is still something that's very usable and you're gonna have to worry about Krom with Katria, but we're seeing Krom less. So there are a lot of cases where you could still use your Takumi and come out ahead. Next up, we have Brave Hector because of course we do. <laughs> 
Um, this is interesting because Armored Beacon, particularly with Hector, I think works really well with Special Fighter 4. There are a lot of things that Hector gets out of this that kind of complements his kit as a whole. And if this is a special you have laying, if this is a skill you have laying around, I think <laughs> I think retooling your Hector might just be worth it. Looking at these results though, I mean this this looks like a nice update to Hector and even something you could go off and use him as an Omni tank. This is really, really nice. Crom uh, just tings off of him. Veronica does take a chunk, but not too much. And then of course we have Yuri who just, <laughs> yeah, that didn't work too well, did it? <laughs> That's okay though. Uh, we, we, we have lots of uses for Yuri. Uh, Yuri does not like Armored Beacon in general though, and pretty much doesn't like Hector's. But you can see this is still a very good thing on Hector, and I've also got him completely decked out at plus 10 and a defense and res boon. But a lot of you have that. Uh, this is to say that if you're thinking about plus 10ing young Hector, but you, <laughs> but you need, but you don't quite have the budget. Your Hector in your barracks probably will work better with the merges included. So understand that. Speaking of, we have Hector. And the biggest thing you're going to have to worry about is that Krom. Um, we're going to go over AoEs later, but understand that because you can beat them with positioning, they are not as much of a concern on offense. But Hector definitely worries about area of effect weapons. Still. These are very good results, and Hector is an absolute monster. From here, though, I wanted to go over some <laughs> a real-world case here. I wanted to put Hector in the wild. All right, Summoners, so this is a pretty standard Astra Catria ball. Um, I, <laughs> you can see a lot of the, the things setting up there with Elamine, false starting Catria, so we don't have to worry about that, and lots of other great stuff, making sure that Mir uh, Mirabilis is taken out of the picture, and... <sighs> So we're going to go through this. I think it's best to just jump right in, to be completely honest. Watch as this sets up here. We're going to see Asker doing Asker things and getting specials proc everywhere. Um, Iceberg's going to come in and... Jeez, 10. This unit, I swear. <laughs> That's not the real thing you want to look at, right? This is it. Krom coming in with Deadeye proc 35 damage and all the way down to 19, but this is the key. Because Asker had that impact effect, we weren't able to take Krom off the board. And this is going to be a very common situation. That would happen with Asker there. That would happen if no follow-up was given out by, uh, for instance, if I had, well, <laughs> I guess I do have that. Uh, so that was doubly taken there. So. That it's why I don't like this special as much on offense. Offense is so based in speed right now. Like that is that is the thing. You you really really want speed. So I it, it's not great. Like obviously we could do some things here. Just heal up and be good to go. Send everyone in again. But you're starting to see kinks in the armor, and you're starting to see places where this could take be a problem. And you see, I didn't get Katri in the right, or I didn't get Elamine in the right place there. And so Krom's gonna come in and just absolutely smack Hector. It's not something that's outlandish. Like this is that takes a lot of forethought, and I I don't like it as much for Hector here. Now, if that was a brave Hector we would have had a different situation and probably would have been able to survive multiple hits. Um, keep in mind, Brave Hector doesn't quite have the res, so that might be a problem in that case, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be a unit that actually takes over the offensive landscape. So defense is kind of a different ball game, and I think you guys are gonna like the results a lot better here. But remember, the, the whole thing is if you survive with four HP, it's a victory on defense, whereas if you do that on offense, you're pretty much defeated. <laughs> so I, anyway, the thing that I wanted to highlight in this section though is the hardy fighter versus armored beacon builds. And so I've got the two Hectors to do that. And then of course we've got our young Hector to look at as well. Like I said, we're gonna go through these pretty quickly. If you need to pause and look at these later, that's fantastic. The key takeaway here though is that 
AOE Lind just destroys things. And pretty much you're gonna see this across the board with area of effect users in general. I've seen a lot more of the melee area of effect users and I think they absolutely destroy things. I think we are going to be pushed more towards the uh, the ranged AOE users as well. Uh, th those hit and run styles are very, very nice and I think we're going to have those come into prominence if young Hector becomes a big part of the meta, which I never know who's going to summon for what. So <laughs> that's always, it's always a guess, but he is definitely good enough to drive that. But you can see the other things here. Like this is, this is two different styles of lethality that are hitting. Uh, Nana, uh, Nina has the, the lethality that is procced on the first hit. Tana has the lethal, lethal, lethality that is procced on the second hit. And then of course you've got Veronica with enclosure and surviving all of these is just absolutely fantastic. Now, if someone were able to get guard on Hector, things would change dramatically and it would get more interesting. But that is not a super common thing that you see on offense, putting that on defense. So I, yeah, we'll, we'll see. But that is something that if you, for instance, put guard on Tana instead of that, uh, instead of that disarm trap, suddenly you've got a completely different ball game. Tempo is the same thing. And we've seen a lot of users have tempo now. So <laughs> anyway, um, let's look at Hector here. And first up, let's look at the Hardy Fighter. And, and this is key. Like you're seeing all of these and Hardy Fighter Hector is surviving and doing just fine. As you users of Hardy Fighter Hector know for defense, he still performs very well. Um, he's taking care of Nina, he's taking care of Veronica, he's taking care of Tana, and yeah, he, he's doing fine. But the problem is they can do chip damage, right? Uh, Veronica comes in there, hits once, backs off, the fence goes off, Veronica comes in again and easily takes care of him. Uh, the AoE again is a different story, but we'll get to that in a second. We're gonna move on to Armored Beacon Hector here, and you can see now this is Special Fighter Hector, and the difference is stark. Now, the first thing that should be made clear is he is surviving by much thinner margins than before. <laughs> just, just flat out. But he's actually killing the unit in retaliation. And that is a huge deal. That means that for these hit and run strategies where they come in, hit you, and then back off and run away, that's not going to work. And they're gonna need some kind of sweep skill in order to pull that off. That means taking up a B slot and means making it harder for them to defeat your team. This is why I'm high on Armored Beacon for defense. I think this is a very good skill that you guys are going to see a lot. And yeah, <laughs> I think this is going to be something that makes offense a lot harder, which is interesting. We, we haven't seen a lot of that lately, but let's go into an example here. All right, so in a perfect world, I would have this rigged a little differently and I would have the new Yuri there as opposed to the old Yuri. But for our purposes, it's going to show about the same thing. Now, ideally what you'd have is something like Valoria here to get into, uh, to get that proct, that AOE. But I want you to see like how just absolutely demolishing this is. Like that is, that is serious. <laughs> in case you needed to see it. I mean, bringing him down to two HP, it just, Lind is a good AOE unit anyway, but that just really drives some things home. All right, so I don't have special Spiral 4 on my Yuri, on either of them actually. I, I'm still waiting on that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna give that to my legendary or not. But one of the things that's interesting to think about here now, I've just given that unit desperation. So, we're setting up on the second hit. You see, on the second hit, because Armored Beacon is ready there, is going to be just bad. First hit gets interesting, and the reason is if you had a unit that did higher damage, if you had Nina, for instance, uh, you came in with a lethality, and I guess this would have to be on Legendary Yuri, though. Um, it's possible to actually get two specials off here, and suddenly this is something that becomes much closer. It's something to watch. It's not a skill I see utilized a whole lot yet, just because 
Firestorm Dance is at a premium, but with the Desperation Seal coming, uh, you're going to want to run Sims with that. You're going to want to look at it. Um, again, I'm not bringing this up as something that is working because I, I obviously don't have all the things inherited, but it's something that I want you guys to watch as we go forward and you guys are building your defenses because I, I know you defense builders are a very passionate lot because I am one of you. <laughs> Anyway, though, uh, let's move on to some summoner duels because there's some more interesting things there. In a move that shocks absolutely no one, this is a really good summoner duel skill. Uh, summoner duels and Aetherade's defense share a lot of the same qualities for things like this in that you, you don't care if your unit survives with 4 HP, you just care if they survive. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I've got three different things to look at here. I did want to bring up Gilliam. I don't have Hector in, but understand that Brave Hector is still really good with this. Um, another one is Athun. We'll talk about her later, but she would also be good. But I only have so much space, and let's face it, stats are... After a while, numbers get hard to look at. So Summoner Duels, let's just really quick go through this and understand this is close. This is a plus one Hector that I was simming. And uh, yeah, that's the thing that's close there is that Krom and understand that's close enough that you're, it could be tipped either way. But the fact that he is surviving is kind of spectacular. So understand that, understand that this is going to be something you're going to see a lot. You're going to have to be prepared for. The fact that this unit does just fine versus Yuri, Veronica and Shez is spectacular. What I will warn you is it depends a lot on when Armored Beacon is proc'd. I know what you're going to say. Everything is set up so that these units come in and it's proc'd on the second hit. But what if it's on a second combat? Or what if you attacked with Hector and suddenly Armored Beacon is on the first hit? Things change quite a bit, particularly with Veronica there. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be something that might be problematic for some of you. Also understand that there isn't an armor alive that can take a Katria ball. Like, uh, Katria is the great equalizer, and uh, for instance, if Veronica has triangle attack, things are just over. Same thing with Krom, same thing with Yuri. I mean, that this, yeah, <laughs> you're just done. But that's every single armor. It is rare that you get a case where you <laughs> you throw a unit up there and find out that with Katria support, the unit doesn't, uh, is able to tank every single unit on the other side. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, Hector is fantastic. Big surprise. Gilliam is really interesting because we just saw him, and he has a lot of the same debuffs going on, and I think this is a very good kit on him. Uh, Armored Beacon really plays into a lot of his strengths. For you Sacred Stones fans, you should be really happy. Uh, Yuri, Veronica all ping off of him. Shez does ping, but keep in mind this is with lethality proc. So understand that that is, that is not something that's going to happen every time. There are teams that specifically set up for that, but you're not going to have to go up against that absolutely every single match. Um, and then of course, Krom is the big one because you will see Krom a lot more than, actually you'll see all of these units about the same right now. Um, Krom isn't as omnipresent right now. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second as we go to Fomortis because summoners. Fomortis is a unit, and one of the problems is you had to do some special things for this unit to survive. And that was Hardy Fighter, and you had, to, which a lot of times gave up the Beast transformation and really hurt the unit's damage as well. Um, Armored Beacon allows you to put Beast follow up back on this unit and gain a lot of what makes this unit special and plug it back into the meta, which is scary. Um, this is actually, of all of these other examples, this is the one that scares me the most. Uh, we'll go over why he's not as good in defense in a bit, but understand, like, I, look at the margins there. In fact, we don't have to go over it later. Look at the margins. On offense, you can stat stack so much that it's just not going to be something that he survives. Like, that Yuri, that Veronica, that Krom, with a little support, suddenly Fomortis doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so, understand that this this unit is still a good near saver on defense and can be a far saver during bonus season, but outside of that is not going to do you a whole lot of good. 
Anyway, back to this unit in Summoner Duels, which is what we're talking about. Um, you can see the Shez problem, but Lethality Shez. Again, that unit just destroys things. I don't have one. I wish I did. I'm hoping to rectify that, but it depends on how the gotcha treats me this next time out. Um, but with that, I feel like we need to go over an example and look at how things work. And of course, I've only got young Hector here. I would love to have Fomortis with that skill, but getting that many orbs is hard. <laughs> All right, so I threw together a team here just to look at how this unit would behave versus some of the current meta here. And I was lucky enough to run into a plus 10 Yuri, which is absolutely fantastic to try this out. One of the hard things about this though is when Hector does his job, no one's attacks into him. So we'll we'll go over a few of the things that happen though. This is a team with some decent merges. Understand that what this team is really trying to do, I, I can't call this a meta team. What they are going for is trying to farm Yuri here, which I totally respect. And hey, <laughs> favor farming is a thing. Uh, still, it's a good stress test for Hector and we're gonna see some fun things that happen. Lots of dances, and you can see that they set up for that Firestorm dance, so you get that, that desperation effect that we we're talking about. All right. This is very, very important, and it's easy to just skip by. But you notice at the end of that, they had Fomortis in position, and they had Yuri still able to go. The thing that you would have expected them to do is to go ahead and take out Hector. They didn't. <laughs> the the reason there is they couldn't so this plus 10 yuri wasn't able to do that and a lot of that is because of the way this unit is set up you can see that the ruptures guy isn't proc this unit is set up to take out hardy fighter units by proccing that ruptured sky on the second hit this is very very common and something that you're going to see a lot of or you probably have already seen a lot of it creates a lot of interesting counterplay. Are you going to be able to take out Armored Beacon or are you going to be able to take out Hardy Fighter? It, it definitely makes a choice there and you're going to have to be a lot more creative with your nukes, which is always tough to do. But just know that that is a thing that exists and it creates situations like this where this, this team is basically stalemated. There's absolutely nothing they can do, which leaves me open to throw Krom in there and absolutely demolish Fomortis. Would that Fomortis have survived with uh, with Armored Beacon? Not in this case because Grand Strategy was a thing, but if Grand Strategy wasn't there, then that answer would have been yes. So they take out Katria and the trade wars begin. Um, the biggest thing though is I am still able to cover all my units with Hector, or at least I could if Embla wasn't there. <laughs> I do wish that Emblem wasn't there because I think that would have made a nice matchup that we could have possibly seen. There is another piece to this though, and we'll get there in just a second. A ton of does ton of things. Now, you're gonna notice this, and I wanted to catch this before it happened. Embla doesn't actually attack into Hector here, and that's because Embla can't. Hector is strong enough that Embla wasn't able to take out Hector, which is, yeah. See, they just move a spot. That's phenomenal. Um, this unit is going to be a lot of fun. I wish this unit was strong enough to withstand a, a sell-off. I have not tested that, but I'm going to just go out on a limb and say probably not. That's, <laughs> that's not a thing that's going to happen. Still, uh, the fact that you can also use this unit as a melee frontliner in some scenarios is good. Um, the... The Cav Conga line is probably going to just demolish this unit though. So understand that this unit's specialty is definitely ranged and Armored Beacon in general is going to be that way. Um, they're gonna surrender there and I summoners, this is going to be something you have to plan for. Uh, we're coming up on SDS in about three weeks. So you're going to wanna have your counters in place for this. This is where it really comes into play where you have both Catria and Cordelia so that you have triangle attack and um, and dual strike on tap. So there's a couple things I wanted to point out. We talked about this throughout the episode, but the armored beacon versus hardy fighter is a, a big deal. <laughs> so I, I need to make this clear as far as, and you see that, so let's go through it. Lethality, and this is proc'd on the first hit. You armored beacon is going to be 
worse against it, Hardy Fighter is going to be better. Enclosure, so that's a special proc on the second hit. Armored Beacon is going to be better, Hardy Fighter is going to be worse. For survivability, and this is the thing I want to pound home, a unit is going to have better survivability with Hardy Fighter, period. This is really important. You saw all the way back to that first chart with the 75% damage reduction versus the 40% from Armored Beacon. That That is that is huge, and that is why a lot of the units that you're going to see with this are going to be at the tip top of the food chain, because the ones at the lower end can't handle it. They, they need a lot more in order to be able to use Armored Beacon. It is a skill for the wailed out recently released units just to be completely honest yeah um as far as killing power and this is the trade if you can survive then you can usually kill the opposing unit which is a huge huge thing uh and, and that's again that's why we're using units at the very top of the food chain but it's it's something you're going to have to weigh as you go through this you're going to have to look at your individual teams and it is definitely a risk if you're looking at reliability, if you're looking at consistency, I believe Hardy Fighter is going to be a better special and skill combination. But man, when Armored Beacon works, it is spectacular. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to point out is that the, the advantage on defense is that you don't have to wait that turn. Like that is a huge deal. Hardy Fighter takes one turn to set up. So it's basically a freebie for the opposing team. For that, I think Armored Beacon on Aetherae's defense is just better flat out. So understand that as you're going in, as you're weighing the pluses and minuses. Um, as far as the best users, and I'm not gonna say this list is comprehensive because I know I'm missing somebody in here and somebody's gonna point it out or somebody's gonna find something that's better than this. But understand that it's not a lot bigger than this list. Your best users in Summoner Duels are going to be your Hectors because they're amazing and they have a lot of the stuff already baked in. Um, your Femortis, who the margins get thinner, but I, I, the, the payoff is really big there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got Gilliam. Um, you've got Athun, who probably benefits even more than Hector, and I should have gone over her more in the episode. But understand that one of the big things with Athun was the what you took away that auto double uh, that Hector has baked into his weapon. You've now given it back to Athun in Vengeful Fighter, and it makes her a lot more potent as a defense unit so it's something to look at it's something that's a lot of fun understand that i did run this on other dragons i do not like it on grima she is set up for hardy fighter i really hated it on duma <laughs> like the sims were just bad like it's the miracle duma build is just your best like that is that is the way to go yes stick with that um on defense, we talked about that. I do want to add in one other unit here, and I was really surprised with Edelgard. Summer Edelgard with Vengeful Fighter and and Armored Beacon is actually pretty potent and something that you might want to try if you have that merged up Edelgard, if that was your, your unit that you just went all in on. Um, on offense, I'm going to put... Takumi here because I like him. I think he's unique in that he has a lot of speed and can deal with a lot of the meta units because of that. Understand that he still definitely struggles with with duo Krom, but I still think it's a very good skill on on uh, Takumi. And then we of course have Hector because I mean we have Hector in every one of these. Hector may be the unit that benefited the most from this just across the board. I am amazed how this unit just never dies. If you're curious as to more of what's going on in the meta, I'm going to leave a link to the latest meta report here. Go check it out. I would love the support. These take so much time, and if you'd like to super chat, I would appreciate it greatly. Take care, and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon.